This knife was made using methods that existed thousands of years ago and can be done in your backyard. And it actually works well. Oh. Human civilizations are defined by their ability to use different metals. I'm asking you to join me and Miss Frizzle for a trip back in time to the Iron Age to discover how these people made functional tools that didn't break before whatever they were shaping. You see, iron or steel is naturally fairly soft, but with some ingenuity and some sticks, you can harden the steel and make it much stronger. I don't have any wrought iron around, but I do have some mild steel that can be used instead. I'll just cut off a piece with my ancient Greek angle grinder. That sucked, so I'm going to switch to an ancient Greek pneumatic cutting disc. I failed to remember how hot these ancient methods make the metals you're working with. A sanding test shows that this mild steel is not hard because there are very few sparks. I'm going to put this piece through a heating and quenching sequence to demonstrate that even that doesn't harden the steel. Even though I got scared of the flames, I still cooled the metal quickly which would harden a proper high carbon steel. However, a return to the sanding test shows few sparks, just like me and my ex-wife after two months of marriage. Now that we know the steel really won't harden from heating and quenching alone, I'm going to start shaping the blade how I want it. In hindsight, this was probably a bad idea and it caused me problems later on. But at least we get to watch this footage of me looking cool. This is how the Greeks would have had to form their iron into a rough knife shape anyways. So I was just sympathizing with those people who were dumb enough to be born 2000 years ago instead of in the 21st century. While the blade is reheating in the ancient oven, I'm going to work on a container to make charcoal. Charcoal is the secret ingredient to making this steel hard. We need this container to be able to withstand high temperatures, making clay a perfect candidate for this year's election. Wait, what? I followed the smack build, smack build pattern until both my creations were taking form. The blade was naturally curving because I had focused my hitting on one side. Just like my ex-wife, whoa, 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 she was the bad guy. <clears throat> I'm just going to use the trusty mini sledge handle to roll out the lid of the container. There's sufficient evidence that shows the Greeks used tongs to cut their clay, and that's why I'm using them, and it's not because I was too lazy to use something else. I need the container to be mostly airtight for optimal charcoal creation conditions. If there's oxygen, the wood will just burn and leave ashes. Oh, spoiler alert, I'm going to use wood to make the charcoal. Sorry if you haven't read the book already. I'm going to put the lid into the kiln first to test what will happen. I really don't want to wait for it to dry, so you and me are just going to find out what happens together. Now clay is normally fired around 2000 degrees, so we'll start at a comfortable 1900. It says it air dries and it has no need for baking or firing, but it doesn't say not to, except it does say not to. All right, it's been in there for like five minutes. <laughs> ah, I have to take the time to do it the right way. Why didn't any of you tell me to stop before I put it in there? Last time I'm trusting you guys. It's important that the fit is very precise. That's why I'm using very precise tools to measure the lid. I know what the problem was. There wasn't a handle on it. That should fix it. Okay, this time I'm going to set the oven to 150 degrees to dry the clay out before firing it. I need to sharpen the blade before I harden it because I don't want a hand file hardened steel for eight hours today. Or any day for that matter. I think the Greeks had better files than this piece of garbage. I'm just going to use the boat grinder because they had pedal power grinding machines back then. With my dried clay container, I headed out into the middle of nowhere to really make this feel like a primitive technology video. Then my pot did the same thing when I put it in the fire because you still aren't supposed to put this kind of clay into fire. Well, that looks like it works swimmingly. Yeah. All right, well, if you're not a dingus, you can make a pot out of clay to make charcoal. Making charcoal is a very simple process. That's why it's one of the only things I got right in this video. You really just need to burn wood in an anaerobic environment. Once you've made your second favorite powder by crushing the sticks, steal your roommate's flour and salt and mix those in. Sorry, Bridger, I ran out. These will make the steel a lot more flavorful when it's done. Add a splash of water to that and you've got yourself some nice carbon-packed putty. Pack that around the entire surface of the piece you want to harden. Easier said than done. You're not cooperating very well. Doesn't have to be pretty, just needs to surround it completely. Just like... Just like... 
All right, I can't think of a joke for that one. While that's taking a full 24 hours to dry, watch what happened when I put the future charcoal in the oven at 1400 degrees. Ah! I need to prepare a brine for quenching as it's more effective than normal water. I'm going to raid the water softener for my salt. We can assume the Greeks had these. How else would they have such nice skin? Guys, look at this. I scooched this, kind of like so, and that's the pattern it left. Isn't that just so neat? Once those are dry, they need to be surrounded in clay because you guessed it, the reaction works better in an airtight environment. I begrudgingly went and spent 17 more dollars to get some clay that can be heated without falling apart. Mm, this burrito is so tasty and yummy. It's so gritty. Did someone say gritty? Well, it kind of looks like an abomination, but uh, don't we all? After drying those for a few days, they can be put in the kiln until they reach over 1400 degrees. At this temperature, the metal begins to undergo some major changes, just like me when I hit puberty. It changes from perlite at room temperature to austenite. This changes the crystal structure of the metal. At the same time, the charcoal has begun to release carbon as it reaches this temperature. The longer you leave the metal in the furnace absorbing the carbon, the deeper the hardened case will go. I watched a video by someone who's a lot smarter than me, and he said that 20 minutes did the trick, so that's what I did on the test piece. Now, theoretically, this should be hardened steel. Let's find out. It's important to quench the steel because it doesn't give the metal time to separate back into perlite and instead solidifies as martensite. This makes the metal very strong but very fragile, just like a bodybuilder. Trust me, I speak from experience. All right, if this isn't very sparky, I'm gonna get very butt hurt. Great. I'm not smart enough to know why that didn't work for me, so we're just gonna try something different on the knife. If I were smart, I would have made a lot of test pieces, but alas, foresight is something I lack. I only have three sight. So I used the methods from somebody else's YouTube video, and they said to leave it in for eight hours. So I just set the timer and hoped to not find the shop burned down the next morning. All right, after eight hours, it's looking like this. Uh, hopefully the cracking isn't too problematic. And now we're going to reheat it back up to red hot and quench it. Let's return to the good old spark test to see if our blade is hardened. My excitement can only be expressed through dance. Let's get off all the gross poos on the outside, then we can perform another hardness test. Here we have the most accurate way of testing hardness. Hardened steel drill bit, mild steel, case hardened steel, hammer, tungsten anvil. It's a lot deeper and wider on the mild steel than it is on the hardened steel. Hephaestus, grant me the serenity. Praise the almighty Hephaestus. Trying to put those holes in that blade turned my scratch all into a scratch nun. <laughs> now it's time for the handle. I'm going to use good old fashioned bogwood oak because its dark color looks very nice in contrast to the blade. Also, we have a lot of it. I tried brass pins, but the largest ones we had were the smaller than the smallest drill bit I could find, so I switched to wooden pins. I'm very proud of how well these work, so feel free to leave any compliments about me in the comments. I'm going to sand off most of the scale and rust, but I'm going to leave just a little to really make it feel like this knife was made by someone with limited technology, even though it was just limited skill. Where'd all the oil go? 
Okay, time to test this bad Larry because a knife is only as good as you can throw it or something like that. Oh, that's kind of dreamy. Let's see how thin we can go. Look at that. The only time you've ever seen a tomato cut this thin was on our other videos of cutting tomatoes this thin. Oh crap, I've ruined the entire magazine. Oh, thank goodness, there's a Spanish side of the exact same content. ¿Qué cosa me estás diciendo? Yo estoy reviento la cabeza.